Hi, Sean. Nice to meet you. Um, you guys are here to promote your new CD, but the thing, the big thing that happened a few weeks ago is the, the gig in Cuba, I guess. How was that? Was that like a, a dream for you guys come true? It's just that when we were um, putting the album together, we discovered that there's lots of references towards Cuba. So we thought it was, you know, pretty mad if we, you know, went and did a gig in Cuba and then sort of, you know, we thought it'd be even crazier if, like, Fidel Castro came. And then when he actually did, it was just, like, astonishing that, you know, sort of uh, a person of, of that importance, you know, in his country and even the world, because, I mean, you know, he is living history sort of personified. Then, you know, we just we just couldn't believe it, to be honest with you, you know. Not even in our own country have we ever had any head of state come to, you know, meet us, you know, let alone, you know, watch an entire gig. So, you know, it was, it was good, you know, good for us. Uh, a lot of people might might wonder why you guys want to perform in Cuba or something, because I don't think it's a coincidence at all, to be honest. Um, oh, a lot of people, you know, think that it isn't, but I mean, like I said, um, you know, it wasn't until, um, I think, you know, possibly just before Christmas that we decided that, you know, Cuba would be a good place to, you know, launch an album, considering that the last time we did it, we did it in Kettering in the UK, uh, you know, with no sort of, uh, you know, fanfare at all. Um, you know, just a lot of the things that, you know, Cuba seems to stand for in the world today, you know, we seem to you have know, some sort of empathy with, and just the fact that, you know, it's a country on its own that has an identity that is, you know, so desperate to keep that, you know, we sort of empathise with that, you know, considering we're a band that, you know, in, within the UK at least, you know, we feel that we don't, we're not part of any sort of uh, scene or movement, that we're very much on our own, doing our own thing in our own style. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a, a, a lot of things in common then with Cuba and the people. And socialism has something to do with it, because I guess you, you guys are very into socialism and the social themes and things like that, uh, that you put in your songs too. But, but it's not party political, you know. Uh, you know, when people ask us, you know, about politics, I mean, our socialism is just more to do with, you know, community and, you know, country and people and, you know, much more than, you know, whether we're la left or right, or, you know, we know, nothing to do with Labour Party or Conservatives. You know, we just want, you know, some sort of, like, you know, sort of justice and integrity and, you know, just, just some, you know, sort of honesty, you know, with people and, you know, sort of, uh, you know, we're more into like, you know, sort of being considerate then. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the new city, what can uh, people, fans expect from it? Um, I think the best thing I can say about it is not to expect anything from it because we don't expect anything from fans. But, I mean, there's a mixture of all our influences, you know, very much like David Bowie's sort of pinups type album. Um, you know, there's lots of references to a lot of the things that we used to li listen to when we were young. And then, you know, there's references going back to, you know, sort of earlier albums. We just wanted to touch base again and find some sort of reality within ourselves. Just because of the last album, we tend to, you know, we, we lose touch then with, you know, ourselves and, our, you know, our surroundings. There are a lot of different styles in it. Is that representative for what you guys are doing right now? Because we can find even a disco song on it. Um, well, even with the last album, with the girl who wanted to be God, that was a, 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 another vain int uh, attempt at trying to do a, a disco track. But you know, we get bored easily, and we find that you know today, you know, people get bored just as easily. And you know, we're always trying to push, you know, sort of the parameters. And I was sort of, you know, we always try and take things to the limit of our abilities. You know, we don't get it right all the times, but at least we're there, you know, pushing our frontiers. Do you get bored easily too? Oh yeah, I mean we we do as people. I mean you know that's why we're constantly consuming as much information as possible, uh, and we're not so introverted that you know that we lose touch you know with, with you know the, the outside world. You know we're very much in touch with it. You know it's just a pity that you know every, the outside world seems to be losing touch with reality at the moment. How do you see that? How do you think people are losing touch with through reality? Um, I think possibly through things like the internet. I think there's so much misinformation on the internet now that I, you know, I just find it just totally unbelievable and I can't understand why people have so much respect for the internet, you know, when it's, it's such an easy um, media format to uh, to manipulate. Because we're uh, doing an interview for the internet too, is that bothering you at all or? 
Well, it doesn't bother me, but I, I just hope that the truth goes out there and people, you know, understand that it is the truth and it isn't something that's, like I said, that misinformation that's put onto the internet that people, because it's on the internet, believe in it, that, that it is the truth. They're looking at you now, so, and I guess you're telling the truth, so... I hope, I hope you don't sort of take this away and start editing, you know... We're, we're not going to edit anything, so we're going to broadcast a full interview. I think it's possibly my paranoia of watching films like Wag the Dog that is, you know, sort of like... I just sort of like heighten my imagination, you know, about media. You're not too paranoid, are you? Well, it's 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 always well, it's good to be slightly paranoid. Then it's always good to question. <laughs> well, talking about the internet, um, we we can't go without talking about Napster. Yeah. And uh, what's your personal or what's the group's opinion on that issue? Well, all I've all I've got to say on it is that my own personal account was closed down as well. And um, I didn't use it to to exchange music. I just used it to listen to music. And uh, I mean, ultimately, I mean, sort of Napster would, you know, sort of bring down, the, you know, would, would sort of speed up then the demise of uh, of live music and bands. I mean, even now, you know, less and less groups are being signed by, you know, by the major record labels, and it would just accelerate that process. Um, you know, music can't be free, like. You know, it'd be just like going into a, I don't know, ordering your groceries on the in internet and expecting not to pay for it. I mean, you know, people have to live, people have to make money. Um, but at the same time, I remember, you know, taping things off radio, but it didn't stop me from going out and buying, you know, the LP if I liked it, and you know, and if I had more money, you know, sort of when I, you know, when I got older. So I think, you know, the Napsters, I think, is there, you know, just basically for people to sample. The music, but I, th I think it shouldn't be there just purely to, you know, to download entire albums, you know. I mean, some people I, I've, I've read, have, you know, that have been stocking, you know, 10,000, downloading 10,000 CDs. I mean, that's got to affect, you know, sort of the music industry, you know, after a while. Oh, your enemy? Your enemy is the internet, I'm sure of that. Um, well, it was ourselves, you know, with the last album, like I said, you know, we sort of lost touch with ourselves. Uh, at the same time, you know, subconsciously, I suppose, you know, we, we see America now as, as being our enemy in the way that it seems to, you know, that it seems to be pushing its culture on every single country in the world as some sort of, you know, uh, a template of, you know, this is how life should be. And then you look at it and it's so dysfunctional and the whole society is breaking down. And yet people are supposed to look up to that as a perfect example of how to, you know, run a capitalist country. And, you know, at the same time, you know, the internet came from America and it just allows all those minority groups to thrive, whereas before they were underground and perhaps just hearsay, now they, you know, they brought to fruition. And, you know, when you get people, you know, some, you know, sort of like organizations then that, that are available to, you know, sort of young minds then, impressionable minds, then I just find it, you know, is about time someone just, you know, I know freedom of speech is, you know, such a big thing in America, but, it, you know, I don't see it as freedom of speech. I just say, see it as, as freedom to do exactly what we want, regardless of whether it is, it is right or wrong morally, you know. I just find America is very unmoral. You sound a little bit like a bitter man to me. Is that, is that true? Because I, I heard City and there's this one song, Why So Sad? It sounds pretty happy to me. Um, I think life is bittersweet when you look at it. I mean, you know, sort of, I, you know, you, you could actually point to one person in this world and, you know, and say that, you know, they're the happiest thing ever. I mean, happiness is just those little brief little moments that you sort of cherish and you, you know, that and you remember sort of later on in life. But, you know, life is, is always going to be a struggle, you know, and our songs are always about struggle. What was making the city struggle for you guys? Um, well, this time it wasn't. I mean, basically because we weren't given any time constraints, so we were basically told we could do whatever we wanted to, and and we did. We you know, sort of, you know, we followed our muse and, you know, pleased ourselves first, and then, you know, maybe, you know, we please other people as a result of it. How were the gigs you did up to now? You did a few, and especially the one you did in, I think England was a special one. Um, well, we've only done two on this um, uh, um, LP so far, and, you know, as you know, the ones in Cuba. Uh, the, the second gig that we did was uh, an hour-long broadcast for Radio One, so it wasn't really a gig. It was more of a, 
uh, a sort of uh, showpiece then for for the album with a, a select a selected audience. Um, a few tickets went on sale to the public, but it was just mostly for the for the broadcast. So we still haven't, you know, sort of got to our full capacity then as a as a, a, a you know a gigging band. And I think you know we'll sort of build up, you know, sort of uh, our, you know sort of our abilities then through the summer, and then hopefully. You know, we'll do you know doing tours then extensive tours of Europe. Is this a gigable city? You think it's going to be a big thing on the uh, the gigs this summer and later on? Um, well, I hope so because we did rather well last time in Belgium, and that we were very surprised at you know because of the, the, the you know sort of the problems with language. Um, because we you know we looked at France and we've never done particularly well there because the translation doesn't quite. You know, come across, and we were very surprised that you know in Belgium, you know that the translation you know seem, seems to come across you know rather well, and also you know sort of our, our style of music, um, I wouldn't say you know it exports pretty you know that that well you know it's taken you know sort of nearly ten years for people to to understand what we're about outside of the UK. So you love performing in Belgium, I guess. It's always been good. I can't remember a bad gig in Belgium actually. It's, no, it's always been good. You know, the last one we did was really good. Uh, the CD is, uh, like I said, very diverse. They're very diverse songs. Do you have any favorites on it? Um, Ocean Spray, you know, because it's, you know, it's quite personal. Uh, it's my personal favorite too, <laughs> to be honest. Thank you very much. Um, What's Full Blues, because um, you know, something that Nick felt quite strongly about, and the lyrics, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know about his situation, and uh, you know that's the reasons for him singing it. Because Nick um, James, you know, sort of felt that he couldn't give it an, an honest approach. So we said, look, Nick, you know, you might not want to sing, but you're going to. So, how did uh, Monsieur Bliss go dancer end up on the record? Um, like you know, like I said, we've always tried doing a, a sort of uh, a disco. Type song, and I suppose you know when you're young and you're given ABBA records for Christmas, something's going to rub off. So we were just just having fun, and you know we just thought you know sort of our sort of like rock the Casbah type song, you know. Mm -hmm. Are there more things we can expect from Manic Street Preachers in the future? Um, I'd like to think so, but at the same time, I wouldn't like to be the Rolling Stones or Aerosmith, you know. Um, I think you know there is definitely a cut-off point in our career. And it's just a matter of, you know, just saying, you know, that's it. You know, we can't, you know, can't go any further. We can't do any more. Can't wait to do some gigs. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. You'd uh, rather do a gig than do an interview. Promotion has always been hard, and I'm, I've got away with it for the last five years. So, all those times where I spent in the hotel asleep and resting, I've no had to give up. So I'd rather, yeah, I think I'd rather be on the road, sort of traveling on the bus. Okay. Thank you.